the ECAM shows normal and abnormal system information to the pilots, thanks to the upper display unit normally dedicated to the engine warning display, EWD, and the lower display unit normally dedicated to the system display, SD. Color coding is used on the ECAM screens for clarity and to help to identify of abnormal parameters. The main colors used are white, blue, green, amber, red. During the course, you will become familiar with the use of this color coding. Let's start with the last three, green, amber, and red which are the most important. Green color coding is used to indicate a normal condition. Notice that on the engine warning display and the system display shown, all indications are normal. Amber color coding is used for abnormal indications that require crew awareness but not immediate crew action. Notice on the engine warning display the amber failure message with a blue action line and on the SD the amber indications. Red color coding is used for serious parameter exceedance and warnings that require immediate crew action. Notice the red warning message on the engine warning display. Let's now look at the two ECAM displays in a little more detail. The engine warning display is divided into two main parts, the upper area and the lower area. The upper area is used for the main engine parameters, fuel on board, fob, and slat flap position indications. They will be discussed in the appropriate system modules. Under normal conditions, the lower part of the engine warning display is used to display memos. There are two columns, the left for long memos and the right for short memos. In the example shown, the memos indicate that the ground spoiler's lever is in the arm position, the seat belts and no smoking signs are switched on, and that the APU is available for use. If failures occur, warning and caution messages are displayed in place of the left memos. In the example shown, there's an amber caution message with a series of blue action items. These action items are your electronic procedure to follow in order to respond to the particular abnormal situation. The system display is used to display particular system information. In the example shown, the cruise page is displayed. This is the page normally seen most of the time when the aircraft is airborne. The useful information from several systems is displayed during the flight. The individual indications will be covered in the appropriate system modules. The system display can also be used to display synoptic diagrams of the aircraft systems. In the example shown, the hydraulic system page has been called. You will see later how these system pages are called either manually or automatically. An aircraft status page may be displayed on the system display to check the state of the aircraft. A normal message is displayed to indicate that the aircraft state is normal and that there are no inoperative systems. Let's see what the status page looks like when things are not normal, for example, following a system failure. The information displayed on the status page will vary depending on the failure. For example, it can include limitations approach procedures and deferred procedures, information, and operative systems. The area at the bottom of any system display 
contains permanent data. Total air temperature, T at T. Static air temperature, S at T. Delta is a temperature. Displayed only in flight, in standard borrow reference mode. Time. And. Gross weight, GW. Note. A G load factor indication will be displayed above the time indication if it has exceeded a G limit after engine takeoff application. Under normal conditions, the ECAM system provides the pilots with the information that they need to know for the particular phase of flight. No more, no less. As an example during approach, when the landing gear is extended, the ECAM wheel system page is automatically displayed. The ECAM system divides the various stages of a flight into phases, from initial electrical power up until after engine shutdown. The ECAM system will avoid alerting the pilots unnecessarily during the critical flight phases of takeoff and landing. So, the cautions that can be delayed until a less critical phase of flight will be inhibited. We will now look at the different ways that the ECAM system advises you when things are not going exactly right. We will start with a minor advice indication and work up to a major fault, concentrating on the two ECAM screens. If a system parameter, for example, an engine vibration level approaches a limit, the ECAM system will advise you of this by displaying automatically the relevant system page on the SD. On the system page, the affected parameter will pulse. Notice that at this stage, the parameter is still shown in green since it is still within normal limits. This is known as an ECAM advisory. And you should refer to the QRH in order to find the related recommended action to do. Now, let's look at what happens when ECAM detects a minor system failure. When a failure occurs, leading to a loss of redundancy, or loss of a system that does not affect the safety of the flight. For example, DFDR fault, the ECAM system will inform you by displaying an amber caution message on the engine warning display. This type of failure is classified level 1. At the same time, the two clear keys on the ECAM control panel, ECP, will come on. Note, on the SD, the cruise page, is still displayed because there is no system page related to this caution message. The caution message must be read. Record a DFDR fault. Then, for the pilot flying, the priority is to make sure that the aircraft is on a safe flight path. This fault only requires crew awareness. So, if required, the handling of the ECAM can be delayed. When the pilot flying is ready to pay attention, he will ask to the pilot non-flying to do the ECAM actions. For this exercise you are the pilot non-flying. So, now, perform the ECAM actions. In this case, there are no actions required. So, only after confirmation from the PF, this caution message can be cleared by pressing one of the clear keys on the ECP. So, as PNF, you will ask for clear recorder, but you will do it only if the PF says clear recorder. As a result of pressing either clear key, the caution message has been cleared from the engine warning display and the status page is displayed automatically on the SD. In this example, you can see that the inoperative system is the digital flight data recorder. On the ECAM control panel, the status key comes on, along with the two clear keys. When safe to do so, 
The status page is reviewed by both pilots. After confirmation from the pilot flying, the status page can be removed by pressing either of the status key or one of the clear keys. So, please, remove status. The status page has been removed. Notice that on the engine warning display, there is a box status caption to tell you that there is information on the status page. On the ECAM control panel, there are no lighted keys. The ECAM actions for the digital flight data recorder fault are complete. So, as pilot non flying, you should announce ECAM actions complete. We will now look at what happens when the ECAM detects a slightly more serious fault, a reservoir overheat of the blue hydraulic system. We will concentrate on the use of the ECAM system, how it alerts you, and how it helps you to deal with the fault, as the hydraulic indications themselves will be covered in the appropriate modules. When a serious fault occurs, the ECAM system alerts the crew, orally and visually. In the studied fault, a single chime will sound and the master caution lights will come on. To cancel the master caution lights and reset the alerting system, one of the master caution push buttons must be pressed. Please do so. The master caution lights are off and the alert system is reset. After reading the fault title, the first priority is always to ensure the safe flight path of the aircraft before dealing with the fault. The master caution and a single chime mean that the abnormal situation needs crew awareness but no immediate action. This failure which is no direct consequences on flight safety, is classified level 2. For crew awareness, the indications are a failure message on the engine warning display, a system synoptic, if any, related to the fault, and automatically displayed on the SD, the lighted clear keys on the ECAM control panel. Let's study the details on the engine warning display first. The system title is underlined. In our case, hydraulic and the fault is shown alongside it. Blue reservoir overheat. Notice the type of abbreviations used. Notice the amber overheat message on the system display. This abnormal indication is displayed where the failure has occurred on the synoptic system. When the pilot flying is ready, he will ask you to perform the ECAM actions. In this example, there is a blue action line on the engine warning display telling you to switch off the blue electrical pump. Now, let's check the overhead panel. On the overhead panel, an amber fault light is on, on the hydraulic control panel. This amber fault light, on the hydraulic panel, helps you, to locate the switch, to be operated. We will carry out the action for you. When the pump is switched off, the action line is removed. So, the blue hydraulic system depressurizes as shown on the hydraulic page by the amber indications. The ECAM system detects the drop in pressure and generates a further alert. There is now a new abnormal message on the engine warning display. Blue system low pressure. The message is boxed to indicate that the loss of the blue hydraulic system is classed as a primary failure that will affect other systems. Depending on the importance of the primary failure, secondary failure messages can be displayed before or after the primary boxed failure message. 
If the primary failure affix systems without secondary failure message, the affected system title will be shown with a star in place of the right memos. In this example, flight control system page is affected by the primary failure. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, you have to clear hydraulic. We will do it for you. We have cleared the amber messages. Notice that normal memos are back on the left hand side of the engine warning display. The ECAM flight control system page is displayed on the SD, which agrees with the item shown by a star on the right side of the engine warning display. On the ECAM flight control page, notice that the controls affected by the loss of the blue hydraulic system have amber indications. These indications will be discussed in the hydraulic and flight control modules. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, you have to clear flight controls. We will do it for you. Notice that normal right memos are back on the right side of the engine warning display. On the SD, the status page is now displayed, containing several pieces of information. The first area gives procedures to apply for landing and other information. The second area gives information about an operative systems following the blue hydraulic failure. You will study the procedures in the appropriate system lessons. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, you have to remove status. We will do it for you. The status page has been removed. The ECAM actions for a blue hydraulic reservoir overheat are complete. So, as pilot non-flying, you should announce ECAM actions complete. Notice that the status reminder is displayed at the bottom of the engine warning display, reminding you that there is information on the status page. This is important when approach procedures have to be applied. During the approach phase, when the flaps lever is moved to flap 1 position, the ECAM system automatically recalls the status page, unless it is empty. You can see that in the example shown, there is a landing distance procedure to apply. You will see how these approach procedures are applied later in the training. The status page has been removed for you, and the cruise page is displayed. At any moment, you may recall manually the status page by pressing the status key. So, we will do it for you. To remove now the status page, you may press on the status key or on any of the clear keys. So, we will do it for you. So far, we have looked at how the ECAM system advises you of minor failures. We will now look at what happens when there is a serious failure that requires immediate action. To demonstrate this, we will use an engine fire. As before, we will not concentrate on the system failure, but on ECAM indications and procedures. This kind of failure is classified Level 3. Be ready to cancel the warning by pressing a master warning push-button switch. Click on the forward arrow to initiate the failure. When the fault occurs, the ECAM system alerts the crew, orally and visually. A continuous repetitive chime sounds and the master warning lights flash. They stop as soon as you press on either master warning light. On the engine warning display, the red message engine 1 fire and the related procedure are displayed. The red push button on the fire control panel and the red indication on the engine panel provide confirmation and identification of the affected engine. The engine page 
has automatically been called on the SD, and in this example, the nacelle temperature is pulsing. Notice that there is a red message, Land SIP, on the engine warning display. This means that the fault detected is serious. The pilot flying should land at the nearest suitable airport. As it is a level 3 warning, and only if the airplane is under safe control, the PF will ask you to do ECAM actions without delay. When the engine master 1 switch is set to off, the engine 1 shutdown caution is shown on the engine warning display. Notice that the amber caution procedure has appeared below the red one. This happens because the red level 3 warning message has priority over the Samber level 2 caution message, which in turn will have priority over an Amber level 1 caution message. Note, if several messages belong to the same level, the more critical message will be on the top of the list. Notice that, on right hand side of the engine warning display, a list of affected systems titles shown with a star is displayed. For the next action, as the control to use is guarded, the pilot non-flying must receive a confirmation from the pilot flying before lifting up the guard. Then, the related action can be done. Here, the engine one fire push button must be pushed. We will do this for you. Notice that there is a white line in the abnormal procedure. In order to let the engine spool to slow down, there is a countdown before the next action. After this countdown, the white line is replaced by a blue action line. Here, the Agent 1 push button must be pressed. We will do it for you. Notice that, the next blue action line will stay displayed even if the related action has been done. As the ECAM has no possibility to know if ATC has been notified, a new countdown has started because the fire has not stopped. A green arrow is displayed to indicate an overflow, as on the left side of the engine warning display, there are not enough lines to display the full procedure of engine 1 shutdown. Agent 1 extinguishes the fire. The countdown for Agent 2 stopped immediately. Notice that the engine fire procedure on the ECAM disappeared. This means the fire is out. The local warnings on the fire control panel and the engine master panel are no longer on, confirming that the fire is out. Landis app has changed from red to amber, which means that the ECAM has determined that the fault is less critical. The crew should consider the seriousness of the situation and select a suitable airport. Also, at the bottom of the engine warning display, the green arrow has disappeared because there are enough lines to display the full engine one shutdown procedure. The remaining steps are similar to those seen for an ECAM caution. So, we will stop here. You have seen that the ECAM system has provided a smart and interactive procedure to help you to deal with a major problem. Note, as the nacelle temperature is back below the advisory threshold, so the engine page is replaced by the cruise page because the caution message displayed on top is not linked to a system page on the SD. The warning or caution message displayed on the top line of the left side of the engine warning display is always the more critical, even if another problem is detected. Notice that the flight warning system fault is more critical than the cabin pressure fault, but less than the engine problem. When there are not enough lines on the left side of the engine warning display, the title, which cannot be displayed, moves to the right side of the engine warning display. We do the actions for you. So, notice that, 
as soon as there are enough lines on the left side of the engine warning display, the titles move from the right side to the left. When the last caution message has been displayed on the left side, the green arrow disappears. After clearing the engine caution message, the next caution moves up. Note, on the SD, the system page, if displayed is always linked to the caution underlined and displayed on top of the left side of the engine warning display. After doing the related action, if any, this caution message will be cleared. For each caution message, you have to wait for the pilot flying confirmation in order to clear it. After clearing the last caution message, the normal memo messages are displayed on the left side of the engine warning display. On the SD, the bleed page is automatically shown because the first title with a star is air bleed. Each system page shown with a star must be analyzed. Then after pilot flying confirmation, it can be cleared. We will do it for you. When the last system page, shown with a star, is cleared, the right side of the engine warning display shows the related memo messages, if any. On the status page, like this proposed example, a green overflow arrow also indicates that there is further information to be seen on that page. By pressing any of the clear keys, the next information can be displayed. The top part of left side of the status page has been removed and the next parts move up, allowing the display of the remaining information. Notice that the list of inoperative systems has not changed and that there is still an overflow arrow. We have pressed again the clear key for you. The last items of inop system column are displayed and the overflow arrow is removed. If you want to display the beginning of the status page again, the status key can be pressed. We are now back at the first status page again. You will have the opportunity to practice by shifting between status pages in the simulator. So, we will stop here. Ecamm actions complete. Notice that at any moment, you can recall the warning and caution messages that they have been cleared during the flight by pressing the recall key. When pressed, the engine warning display shows the list of previous messages following the priority logic. So, the more critical message being on top. As an option, an OEB database lists the warnings and cautions relevant to one OEB. This database will be loaded into the FWCs via the MCDU. An OEB reminder function will provide the crew with an operational help by clearly identifying any procedure or status messages which are affected by an OEB. So, the crew will be informed in real time on the ECAM screens if the related procedure or status is applicable or not. Note, the crew has to refer to the QRH, where the full OEB information is provided. An OEB reminder flag can be shown only on the ECAM procedure. In this case, the ECAM warning or caution title message is unchanged, but the related actions are replaced by a message, refer to QRH OEB procedure, and the related status page is unchanged. Or, the OEB reminder flag can be shown on the ECAM procedure and on the status page. In this case, the ECAM warning or caution title message is unchanged, but the related actions are replaced by a message like previously. The related status page has the additional message refer to QRH OEB procedure. Or, the OEB reminder flag can be shown only on the status page. 
In this case, the ECAM warning or caution title message and the related actions are unchanged. But there is an additional message, as shown. The related status page has the additional message, refer to QRHOEB procedure. In this module, we have discussed the ECAM system. You have seen the various failure levels and how the ECAM system alerts, indicates, and helps you to deal with a failure. Throughout the ground school course and during your simulator sessions, you will have the opportunity to practice ECAM procedures.